Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, November 5th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I want to start out with a couple of observations about the mass exploitation of the Blue Keep vulnerability. I don't have a link for this, at least not yet. It's just some internal discussions uh, we had here. First of all, it does appear to be quite efficient. We have seen some numbers that uh, pretty much all machines that were exposed got taken over by this crypto miner. Another little note here is also that once uh, these systems are infected and are running the crypto miner, you may get some false negatives from vulnerability scanners. One of our handlers observed in his environment that all of a sudden all of the machines that he had still registered as Blue Keep vulnerable appear to be patched. Well, what actually happened was that they had been infected by this crypto coin miner and now his scan timed out and came back as a negative. So make sure that whatever scanning tool you use does wait long enough for the replies to come back. Otherwise, once the system is infected with this crypto coin miner, it may actually show up as patched. The bot itself doesn't patch the system, also doesn't block RDP access, it just keeps the machine busy so your response times from RDP are slow. And then we got a vulnerability in Clam BC, the bytecode compiler for the Clam AV open source antivirus engine. Now, typically vulnerabilities in antivirus engines aren't really all that uncommon, sadly, and certainly an important problem. But in this case, it's probably less of an issue. The more severe class of vulnerabilities in antivirus engines is triggered when the engine is scanning a malicious file. So the file will actually then exploit the antivirus engine, not the user that will receive the file if it ever makes it that far. In this case, however, it's different. The vulnerability is in this Clam BC, the bytecode tool that's part of Clam AV, and it reads only signatures. So in order to exploit this, the attacker first would have to convince the administrator of the Clam AV instance to load this malicious signature. Secondly, it only is vulnerable if you actually use Clam BC, which you often don't use. There are other tools that are more commonly used like Clam D, Clam Scan and such to read these vulnerabilities. And you need to have Clam AV compiled with the just-in-time compiler enabled, which is another non-default option here. So I don't think there's really much of an attack surface here. Interesting exploit still, and you definitely should always be careful where you load your signatures from, even beyond this particular somewhat exotic exploit. And Apple released Xcode 11.2 just a week or so after it released Xcode 11.1. This release fixes two vulnerabilities that were discovered by Pons and Peng from the Shihu 360 team, and it can lead to arbitrary code execution. Now, again, not super likely that sort of the average user is being exploited like this. You need to open the malicious file in Xcode. However, developers themselves are, of course, at the top sort of of the list of targeted entities, and that's but you certainly should pay attention to this and make sure that you keep Xcode updated. And then we have an update for a bit more common hardware or software. Microtik updated its firmware to fix a DNS cache poisoning vulnerability that was discovered by Tenable. Now this is a little bit different than what we usually see sort of when we talk about DNS cache poisoning. Usually this involves sort of spoofing responses and it's not really all that easy. But uh, what happens with Microtik is that a user User, even without authentication, can ask the router to resolve a host name using an arbitrary DNS server. It's quite commonly used for debugging, it's not necessarily a bad feature, but whatever response comes back is 
cached and then offered for other users. So what I could do is I could connect to the Microtik router and using the Microtik uh, Winbox protocol, which is sort of the admin protocol that Microtik uses, I can then ask the router to resolve, let's say, google.com using my name server. And then of course I can return whatever response I would like and that response will then be cached. So very easy to exploit, just requires that Winbox, that protocol is reachable from the outside. Winbox typically listens on port 8291. Now, while this is not your standard sort of web-based admin protocol, it's really more sort of an API, I would still recommend not to expose this to the outside. And this is yet one more reason why this is probably a bad idea. A blog post describing this vulnerability also shows how it can be used to then do even worse stuff, like for example, poison the URL being used to download updates. And with that, for example, downgrade the router, which actually is sort of a separate vulnerability. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.